This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, they do. I guess we should mention that uh, there's a big tease happening uh, right before this goes down at the Survivor Series. And it's about whether or not Diesel really is a good guy. And if you were watching at home and you showed up at MSG, maybe you had a different opinion of diesel. So the way we're getting him ready for this world title thing is with one of those elimination matches at survivor series. It's the bad guys on one side, the teamsters on the other, the bad guys are razor Ramon, one, two, three kid, Davey boy, and the head shrinkers across from them. The teamsters that's Shawn Michaels, diesel, Owen Hart, Jim Neidhart, and Jeff Jarrett. Of course, somewhere in here, there's real problems. Uh, Shawn Michaels is going to throw the tag wheel on the ground and, and make it clear. He wants nothing to do with diesel again. And Meltzer would be critical of this in his write up. Uh, I think, uh, let me find the phrase that he uses here. Uh, it wasn't exactly, uh, overwhelmingly positive. The diesel turn was well done. Although the match was a major disappointment. None of the matches were particularly good. And the second match was particularly awful. While most liked the Hart backland title match, I was bored to death by it for the first 25 minutes. Meltzer was, was a little critical of, of Brett and backland, but he did think that maybe this turn, this split, this breakup, which everybody knew at this point was inevitable with Sean and diesel. I don't know. was a little less than ideal. what do you think of the way everything went down with, uh, diesel and Sean at survivor series? Again, it's a chapter in a story. So I thought it was well done because it got people talking and it was a natural progression of the story. So to take the next step, you, you've got to have, you've got to have spats along the way. And this was one of those spats along the way. Let's keep it going. Let's talk about what's going to happen with diesel. Now that he has the world title and seemingly he's got real problems with, uh, Sean Michaels, we're back doing a live raw on the 28th. And, um, diesel does an interview, which Meltzer says was entirely too long. And he says, quote, he isn't as smooth at all at trying to be a baby face. That isn't to say it's not going to work, but if the diesel thing is going to work, they have to be careful and leave it in short doses like nine one one and ECW because it won't work if they keep the matches and interview, if they don't keep the matches and interview short. His weaknesses will be exposed if they aren't careful. And uh, a great deal of his charisma was his ability to stand there and do nothing and take the rub off of Michaels. The gist of it was he'd give Bret Hart a title shot. This is interesting commentary here, I guess, in that we're saying, Hey, we do have somebody who has a real upside and real potential, but maybe he's not ready to go out there and do a long interview all by himself. Is that a fair criticism? Do you think at this point uh, of his run? I think that what we did with him was not good. Um, this is another example of, um, and I'm gonna pick on Jim Ross here for a second. And, and, um, we all of a sudden, we went from characters and you went from what was cool and what the the audience was buying, which was diesel is an ass kicking heel. He wins the title has a spat with Sean. He becomes this jokester and, and Hey, Bobby Backlund, bow tie, Bob and, um, shit like that leading the office, singing Christmas carols and stop being diesel. He does an interview where Jr. talks about, yeah, no, I got your, your, you play basketball in, in Tennessee and you, and all the, now Kevin, I, I, I didn't want fucking Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash wasn't the guy the audience fell in love with. They fell in love with the nasty heel diesel. When you go back and you look at uh, you look at the history and you go back and you watch old 
tapes and old shows and everything. Hulk Hogan was, was a terrible human being. He cheated. Yes. Uh, he didn't take his, his. He didn't take calls from his friends because he was working out. Um, but the biggest baby face in the world. He was a heel. Stone Cold Steve Austin was a heel. That's why they loved him. Diesel was a heel, and we made him. We we took Diesel away from him. Jr. starts calling him Kevin. I don't know who the fuck Kevin is. I don't care who Kevin is. I cared about my guy Diesel. And when we humanized him, I think that at that moment, Diesel lost all of his momentum when we made him champion the first time as a babyface and tried to present him as a legitimate athlete that with legitimate credentials, nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. They want to be entertained. They want characters. And there are people that want the legitimacy. Well, then go to something legitimate. If you want story and entertainment, then that's what we're trying to give. And, and it, when it got to be a departure from what we had been doing, I think that's where we lost them. I think that that's where it just became... I don't I don't want Kevin from Tennessee. I want Diesel. I want the badass. Well, but let's talk about that. I mean, isn't this something that Vince would have had to co-sign or did JR just really He go- did co-sign it. And that's and, and again, it sucked. It sucked. He did. And and you know, they're they're different factions pushing different things. Um, I, I made the argument and I was countered with, you know, God damn, you got to be real. And, you know, God, you know, we've, we've got to present him in a different way and all this other shit. And I was like, yeah, okay. But that's not the guy that we've been presenting all this time. That's not the guy the audience got behind that made us say, Hmm. Maybe we've got a baby face on our hands. Maybe we've got a guy that we can push and make larger than life. We took him from being a larger than life character and made him the guy next door that goes to college and plays basketball. Wasn't good enough to go pro. Didn't play for a major university. And I'm not knocking anybody that plays college athletics in any way, shape, or form. Because that's a different level than, you know, hey, by God, I made the high school football team or the basketball team. Hell of an athlete. But if I want to watch a mediocre basketball player, you can watch that all day long somewhere. If I want a larger than life kick ass fucking diesel, that's my guy. Not the guy that fucking went, you know, in a dorm in East Tennessee and. The idea I just hated it. If I he fucking was, hated it. I think what you're driving at is if the guy was Michael Jordan, then let's exploit that. But if he was, right. then let's make him the Michael Jordan of this. Okay. Just freestyle. Yeah. Let's no, talk. yeah. I mean, that that's, that's true. If, if he was, okay, look, if he were Kurt Angle in college, that's different, you know, that's different, but go ahead. You know, it's like, it's like saying, well, you know, I went to San Jacinto uh, Junior College and, um, man, I was a professor at San Jacinto Junior College in Houston, Texas. Okay. I had tenure there. And you were doing this while you were. I never, I never went a day to, I would never went one day to college. <laughs> but yet, but yet I taught karate in San Jack Junior College and, and fuck, you know, come on. Wait, you actually talk karate? Conrad? I know. I'm a three-time Black Belt Hall of Famer. I just assumed that meant you wrote three checks. I mean, there's actually some kids out there who think they're badasses because of you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Daniel Knight, I took him and made him turn him into a badass. Now he's like a badass lawyer. Uh, he was one of my students when he was five years old in Friendswood, Texas, which was the first class that I had. Um, 
on down the line, man. It's a whole fucking list of them. Wait, hang on. You were teaching five-year-olds how to, th- there's so much we got to talk yes. about this another time. Oh yeah, man, dude. L- let me tell you something. Uh, Bill Gray and the American Society of Karate, they knew what they had. Okay. But yet I don't dwell on my three-time black belt hall of fame career, uh, in that world because now uh, I- I'm in another world. I don't talk about starting karate in 1970 and getting my black belt and three-time black belt hall of famer and teaching karate and all of those things like that. You know why? Cause nobody gives a fuck. Okay. Let's, uh, let's keep it going. And, and something comes out in the observer, uh, the next week that I think you've already touched on. Diesel is participating in a celebrity slam dunk contest in conjunction with the NBA all-star game this week. And is also in an MTV softball game and judging from a lengthy interview at raw, where they called him Kevin Nash and tried to put him over as a real person, as opposed to a cartoon character, they looked to be committed to building the company around him in the same type of interview. McMahon did with Hulk Hogan before his match with Sid justice. And again, when he came back 10 months later after the steroid controversy, Even the normally conservative Japanese mags are calling him a box office failure. So the rap is already out fair or not just two months into his run. Oh, this isn't working. I don't know how much of that is really his fault or fair, but I I do like that. They reference that big sit down interview that Kevin Nash does with Vince McMahon. It's got like the, the studio look, what do you remember about that interview in particular? I I have to assume you were there helping shoot this, this promo. I was, and I hated it. Absolutely. I said before, I, I, I hated it. I didn't think that it was the right way to go. Um, I was outvoted if you will, because that that's the way we went and got on board and did it. But. Um, I hate it then. I hate it now. I don't think it was the right direction to go. And I think history will bear me out. It, it, it took the mystique off of diesel. So uh, again, I just, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a, a college basketball fan. I'm not a basketball fan. I don't give two shits about basketball. Uh, I enjoy football, but I really don't care that much about if, you know, if Tim Tebow had chosen to go into wrestling instead of baseball. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I really would have been that interested. I don't know. I just, I never got the, hey, he was great in another sport or he played in another sport in a small college somewhere okay great a lot of people do make him larger than life that's i just yeah i i I hated it and the fact that japanese wrestling magazines well who gives a um, shit about that no i don't care about that but it, it it is just so weird that vince buys into this you know kevin nash instead of diesel thing it's such a departure like i can't imagine them sitting down with jim hellwig you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Great example. Like what the fuck? You just, you're not invested in, you're not invested in him. We, we, we invested in diesel. We spent the last whatever year and a half on diesel. Not Kevin Nash. Now all of a sudden you're telling me he's just a guy that went to college and played some basketball. Yeah. And that's your, your focus. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.